So something that goes along with uh, differential equations is uh, what's called a slope field. A slope field is just a, a picture of the slopes of the solution curves. It's, uh, it's something that's pretty useful for some of these differential equations that you can't solve analytically. The ones that we've done so far, you can solve analytically just in kind of one step, right? So it might seem, what's the point of doing this? But I want to show you what a slope field is. A slope field is, and we'll look at it, something that generates it automatically, not just by hand here, but there's a place for you to draw it by hand after. Um, if we just look at this first one here, the derivative equals x. A slope field is just really focusing on the, fa the, the fact that a differential equation really says the slopes of the solution curves are equal to this. And this one's pretty simple because it just says the slopes of the solution curves are equal to the x value. So there's lots of things online you can find that will plot slope fields for you. This one, uh, you can, there might be fancier ones and stuff, but we want dy dx equals x, and it'll create a slope field right below here. What a slope field is, is it plots little short lines at certain points. I don't know, I mean, this must just do it every, it doesn't even do it every half, or well, maybe it does. Maybe it does it every, I don't know what the units are or how often it does it here, but there's probably settings up here, field density seven, or maybe let's go down to about four, or something like that, five maybe. Five might make it better. This is putting, this is calculating slopes of lines at different places. Three, is that gonna work better? Remember that we, we had the solution to this as, what was the solution to that? dy dx equals x, it was a half x squared. These are, these are little, these are showing the slopes of the solution curves without even solving the thing, right? All this does is it, everywhere that you set, it plots a little short line that shows the slope of what the solution curve would be. So we found that kind of in the middle here, it showed that the slope was zero. And then as you move out, right, the slope's equal to the x value. The slope at one is gonna be one. The slope at two is gonna be two. Slope at three is gonna be three, right? It gets steeper as you go either way. That matches what that, what that graph looked like, right? So if we go back to our page here, we can draw this. A slope field for this with these points on here, just anywhere you have the x coordinates or anywhere you have these, I just put little dots on here every one for the sake of convenience. You know, on there you can set it to be however, however uh, dense those little dots are. But along here, what's the x coordinate along that axis? What's the x coordinate? So, you know, even before you solve this thing, you know that the solutions, the slopes are going to be zero here. So everywhere along there, you can put a little line that shows that the slope is zero. What about here? Slope's one, so you can put a little line that's one. Now, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not using a ruler, but you could, you could make sure that each of these lines passes through this, like if you extended it. We'll see that again. I'm not just drawing random diagonal lines. Make it so the slope looks like it's going to be one, right? What about the other side here? Slope there would be minus one, right? Because the x coordinate's negative one. Again, just to not forget what this is, it says derivative or slope is the x coordinate. So over there, it's going to be minus one. And I'm trying to draw it so it has a slope that it passes through that next point, right? So I'm trying to extend it so it goes through there. And then you can keep moving out from there. Here, they're gonna have a slope of two. So I'm gonna draw a little short line segment that kind of goes through that so it looks like it's two, right? It's hard to, when you get steeper slopes, it's hard to tell what they actually are, but you just have to do your best if you're drawing it by hand. And then it's going to be three, and then that's more than enough for lines to use here. Again, if you're trying to extend it, I would say use a ruler so that it's hitting that, right? So that the slope's actually three. It's hard to tell the difference between a slope of two and three, and then this is going to be oops, negative three over here, a little bit steeper. So that's a slope field for that.
okay, for that differential equation. As I said, was this fairly simple to solve algebraically or was it difficult? This is pretty easy to solve algebraically, right? Slope fields are most useful when you can't solve them algebraically or they're very difficult to solve algebraically. We don't do much with differential equations in this course. You can take a whole you know, second or third year university course called differential equations in mathematics departments if you want. But we just kind of scratch the surface a little bit here. This one might be harder for you, maybe not too hard. I had to set the grid up differently here because I wanted you to be able to you know, work with the points in your head. So nice values, nice pi fractions. Can you try and construct a slope field for that? I'll pause this and then uh, and show you a solution in a few minutes. Okay, remember, this just says the slopes of the curves are the sine values of the x-coordinate. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Okay, so not sure if you uh, did this or not, but um, if you look at, let's say, zero is the easiest one. This says slope is sine of the x value, so sine of zero is zero. So right across here, it's going to be the same as the first one where you have horizontal line segments. And then you have, this is pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is 1, so the slope's going to be 1 here, right? So these are all 1. This, what's the sine of pi? Sine of pi is 0, so it's going to be 0 again. And then you have sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So it's going to be all downhill here. And then you have sine of 2 pi is 0 again, so you have 0. And it might not look very interesting, but... And then just to fill out the other side, I know this is kind of painful, but it's sine of this is negative 1, this one there. And then sine of negative pi is 0. Okay, so remember what this is. This is, a, this is a picture of the possible solution curves. We haven't actually solved it algebraically yet. It's a picture of what the solution curves might be. So this, like, this picture sure shows that those are going to be kind of parabolas, right? Because if you, let's say it passed through, I think the point I put down below here, the second part here says, now draw the particular solution. Okay, draw the particular solution you found um, on this slope field according to, no, I didn't even give you a point, did I? Um, oh, I gave you the point in the previous page, didn't I? What was the point I gave you for? I didn't give you a point for this, but we said 2, 3, I think. I didn't write it on there, but what were we talking about that thing passing through 2, 3. If you kind of follow the, the, the slope field, right, the directions of these lines, it's going to look something like this, right? It looks something like that. Okay? So that's a particular solution that passes through there. And then this one was through 0, 1, wasn't it? This point here, this sine one. Is that what the point was? If you follow these slope lines, as you go to the right, what's going to happen with them? We didn't draw them. We could draw them more, like we could draw more in here if we wanted to, but they're going to start to get steeper, so it's going to curve up, right? And it's going to go through there, and then they're going to get less steep, and it's going to pass through there, and it's just going to keep following these lines, right? This would be pretty hard to draw just from the slope lines that we've got here. We'd have to have them more dense on the page to really see what was going on. But the drawing it by hand, I didn't want it to get really overboard. Right? That's a particular solution that passes through that point. This is a particular solution that passes through that point. Okay? It fits nicely because the, you know, the, the slope lines here everywhere match the curve, right? The curve has to match the slope lines. You don't pass through a point like this where the slope line goes 
completely opposite to the way the curve goes. Drawing a slope field depends on this, what you call local linearity, that if you zoom in on a curve close enough, it looks like straight lines, okay? That's what a slope field is, all right? Yes? How do you know which lines to connect to? Well, I, I don't have very, I mean, these aren't very dense on the page here. We only have the, like the zero, and then the next ones are one and stuff like that. If we did some in the middle here, like if we did some at this point, you'd find that it would be, or this point or whatever, everywhere along there it would be not one, it would be like this much. So you'd see that they slowly get higher as you go to the right, right? As you go to the right, they, they're positive, not negative. So, I mean, we kind of know what the what it sort of looks like. Because what was the solution? It was negative cos x plus 2. That's negative cos x plus 2. So we're kind of cheating here a little bit because we drew a slope field that doesn't have very many lines. They're not that dense on there. If we go back to that thing online and we put in here that sine x, okay, then you can see that it, it's going to be a lot more dense. And I think it's actually one of the examples, sine x. Now, if you if you make this field density higher here, you kind of see that they gradually get steeper and you can really see that it goes up, then it goes down and you can get a sense of what the curves look like. For these ones, it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem that exciting to draw a slope field. It's, it's more useful when you have things that you can't solve algebraically. Okay, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. For now, for drawing slope fields, if we're drawing them by hand, we're not going to draw them that densely. We're, we're sticking mostly to things we can solve by, uh, by hand. Maybe you want to write down a few notes there before we, uh, we look at um, the third part of this.